Hi there everyone, this is Gills. I'm here to show you about a cool little device that was made um, in the really early 2000s. Um, it's a hacking, it's kind of like a hacking device, but it's not exactly a hacking device as much of it's just a, a in-game code changer. Um, it's called the, uh, it's called the Monster Brain is the one that I'm using right now. This is what it looks like. It's like a uh, clunky little device. You plug it into the back of your Game Boy. Um, this works for the, uh, the original Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket Color and the Game Boy Advances and it does not work on the DS Lite because it is formed like the original uh, Game Boy cartridges. So this is a device for changing Pokemon and items in the Pokemon series games. It ranges from the red, blue, yellow, gold, silver, and crystal games. Um, there are three different versions. This one is the latest version, so it works all the way up to Crystal, but there's two earlier versions that only work for the first generation games and the second generation games, excluding Crystal. So, here's my copy of Silver that I'm going to be using, and you plug it in on the back here, upside down like this. So if you're playing on a Game Boy Advance, it's going to plug in like this, with the game facing back. If it's on the back of a Game Boy, it's going to plug in like this. You're going to see it from the front here. So I'm using a GameCube with a Game Boy Player, so it's a little easier to see here. Oops, that was not meant to be done. So here I'm starting up the GameCube. Hope I didn't screw anything up. So here's the beginning of the menu. Be warned, the music is freaking annoying. So here's the menu. Oh gosh, I, I'm gonna lower the volume here. Okay, so this this button makes us the game start at whatever it's already set to. My game has a dead battery, so automatically it's going to. Oh, it's already working. Hold on, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see where I can reset the. That was an accident, sorry about that. I'm gonna try and make this as quickly as possible so it doesn't prolong too much. Anyway, so there's the editor. My memory at the moment is probably destroyed, so I'm going to back up my save. Oh wait, no, that was wrong. I'm gonna restore my save. So here's, here's my save here. You can save up to I think it has about 60 blocks, I believe, that you can save, and about it takes about one block per save. You can delete your saves, and you can back up your games. That's the cool thing. You can save multiple copies of your game. So you can have pretty much, like, 40 saves of Pokemon Silver, or any Pokemon game, and you can restore and back them up and name them. Now, here's the editor. This allows me to change my name. So I'm going to keep myself as Gills. Change my rival's name, which I never named. I can edit my properties of my money, the time that I have on my game, so I can say I beat the game in one minute. I can edit my badges, which seems to not really affect the use of fly, unfortunately. I tried to use it. I can't fly to other towns if I haven't already been there yet. Uh, clock, my ID, my scene decks, cot decks, edit gear, and allow fly, which still doesn't seem to work. I could edit my monsters, so right now let's say I have Cyndaquil, okay? I can change its gender and type, which is valued by this number. You can't really just pick a gender because it's not just a one or two value. The gender and type actually changes whether it's a shiny or not, and there's a lot of values. I don't remember, I think, I don't remember exactly how much. Oh yeah, there's 255, because that's the IDEX number. Make it as an egg, change it, to, you can change every single stat, change the original trainer, change the moves, so I can give it any move that I want it to. So, let's say I have a Cyndaquil with, uh, let's say, let's say Hydro Pump. I give as many power points as I want, and that's my Cyndaquil. Now, I want to give, I want to make a Mew, so I'm going to have to, the annoying thing about this is that it, just, it doesn't, show like a list and you just kind of scroll down, you have to go Pokemon by Pokemon in exact order. So if you want to have a Celebi 
Well, have fun going all the way to the end of the list, one at a time. So I want to get a Mew, because that's always fun to have. Give it a nickname, because otherwise it's going to have a blank name. Let's give it... Oh, I don't even know where numbers are. Oh, I guess they don't have numbers. I can make it stored as an egg so I can literally hatch. And I'm gonna make it, well, I guess I can't change this level from here, so I'm gonna have to, oh, that's right. You have to give it val experience points. So if I wanna make it level 98, I had to change its experience points. I can't just change its level, apparently. Change its original namer to Okay, and I'll... Mew's not anything special with having any kind of uh, move because it knows every single move available. I'm just going to give it a bunch of punches. So, you have to make sure that your number of monsters is correct, otherwise it's not going to give you your Pokemon. If you say that you have one Pokemon but you edited two, it's not going to pop them in your party. You're only allowed to edit the Pokemon in your party. You can't change Pokemon in the boxes unless they are in your party. Which doesn't really make much of a difference because you can just empty your party, turn and set the game so you can start editing again, and just create six new monsters for yourself. Now for the fun of it, I'm going to throw in a Celebi too because everyone loves Celebi. Let me see if I can go backwards. Can I go backwards? No, I can't go backwards. Actually, yeah, you know what? Forget it. I don't. It's gonna be too. It's gonna be, take too long. All right, so I can edit my pack. I can change. I can edit my. I'm going to edit the balls. <laughs> anyway, I can give myself any kind of item. Even the Tarot Sama. There are, like, I think there's, like, 12 or 18 different Tarot Samas in this game. And I can make as many as I want of them. I don't really know what they do. Some of them don't do anything. Some of them act like other items. But it's pretty fun. I can edit my key items so I can have any of the key items I want. It could be Mystery Egg. I could literally have anything I want. Edit every TM, and edit regular items like potions, escape rope. Let's say I want to have, well here's another Terrasama. Uh, have max revives. And then I can enter poke. This acts like a like a game shark in which you can edit and make a code, but instead of having numbers, they only have certain letters, and some of them are I, I believe they're missing. Yeah, see, M N O, and then just skipped P. So I don't know how this really works. Someone on the internet figured a way that you can convert game shark codes into this, and it would work like a game shark. The only thing is, I tried it, and I could not get a Mewtwo up here in the wild, which was kind of kind of sad. So, and it says right down there, Poke is bad. If you got it, if you got a code correctly, it would say Poke is good, but it doesn't tell you what it does. And when you try to do it, like try to make a Pokemon appear in the grass, a specific Pokemon like Lugia, or if you want to, like a Shiny Eradicate, it doesn't seem to make it appear. I don't know if there's some prerequisite that I didn't achieve, or if I'm just, or I'm bad at the code. But it said poke is good, so apparently it does something. I'm not sure if this is like an indefinite, if you if you enter it and save the game, if it keeps it stuck on a save file or not, because I have no experience with this. If anyone knows how to work with this thing, how, how pokes work, please let me know in the comments so I can actually have some fun with this, uh, this bit. All I know is that it uses hex numbers. Um, I believe it was like a couple years ago that I tried to figure this out and I, it didn't work. So, once I finish, I save my changes. Except I want to... Yeah. So, now that these changes have been saved, I'm going to start the game. The game save that I had used was just before I got my starter. So I had no Pokemon, I believe. Maybe I got Cyndaquil. I forget where I started here. Yeah, I had my Pokemon because I'm in the grass already. So I had Cyndaquil, and now I've got Hi the Mew. 
And now I have Mew. But its HP is zero, because I forgot to give it HP. Hey, wait, what happened to its moves? Okay, so apparently something happened to it. I forgot to change that. He's holding Terry with Sam, I believe. Somewhere. But he's got Hydro Pump now. So that should be kind of fun. And I'll... I'll figure out how to... I, you have to remember that when you get a Pokemon... Like, I just, I just messed up here. Mew has literally zero health. I forgot to edit its health. Just because I leveled it up... Just, it's now level 98 with zero stats and everything. It has no HP, it has no moves, and it has no stats. So you can literally make a Pokemon with complete stats and be level 1. And then, you know, troll your friends with your old Pokemon game. And tell them that you didn't use a Game Shark. Now this, if you save the game, it will save it onto its actual save. All, everything you edit here... You don't need to have the clunky, stupid device stuck to your system every time that you you want to use a Mew. So you can just give it a Mew, take, save the game, take it out. Only thing is with my game, since my game has a dead battery, it I kind of have to keep it with this thing to keep it saved. So anyway, I'm going to show you Cyndaquil with Hydro Pump. And I wish I could have showed you Mew, but I forgot that it's dead. But it does exist. Okay, well, this is not really good for my video. I could probably turn up the beat and music now. Probably should give it some other kind of moves just to make this a little more interesting. But it takes a lot... The annoying thing is that it takes a while to, to go through the whole list of moves. And if you want to have Beat Up, good luck, because Beat Up is the last move on the list. Which, I believe that I learned that because of the, the Celebi Hatch glitch. So anyway, that's the, that's the use of this. You can make it so you can have any Pokemon. You can have Charizard, you can have Dragonite, you can have any Pokemon, Tyranitar. Any Pokemon that you want to have, you can have it. You can change your rival's name if you accidentally forgot to, if you named him stupidly, or if you want to make his name stupid, it's all for fun. You can do anything you want with this thing. The great thing about this is that this device is really cheap on the internet. I got this one about two years ago for like $8 brand new on eBay, and there was other ones about the same price, from 5 to $15, and it works pretty freaking well. I believe it can save files for other games as well, but it, you can't edit other games like this. It's specifically made for Pokemon, but I believe you can make backup and restores. And I believe that's all that's really... Um, I believe that covers up this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope that anyone will be interested in finding these device, these little games as uh, uh, Monster Brains. They're, they were called Brain Boy in the first, uh, the first iteration, then became Monster Brain, and then Master Brain is the one I'm using now, which allows you to make edits in Crystal. That's the best one, and that's also ri ridiculously cheap. Um, doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of information on these things. There's, like, no, no one really seems to know about them. I've asked at different retro game stores. They have never heard of it, but I think it's an amazing little piece, and beside the annoying menu music, because I don't know who composed that, and the way that you have to navigate the moves and uh, Pokemon list. It's a really good, reliable system. So I hope you've all enjoyed, and uh, catch them all.